Hi and welcome back. In this video on automation, we're dealing with track-based automation, or TBA. And in particular, we're going to focus on recording automation in real time. Now, to do this, we have to make sure our automation mode in Logic is set to a record mode, touch, latch, or write. We're going to go ahead and move this to touch. And let me point out also, we have this same menu on the channel strip. Honestly, I probably only toggle between off and read in general on the channel strip rather than the record modes, but they're there as well, the whole menu. I want to point out we do not use Logic's record function to record automation. For MIDI and audio, absolutely. For automation, this is what we have to do. And Logic has to be playing. So we have to be in a record mode and Logic has to be playing. Then we have to toggle what, to whatever track we have selected. We have to toggle the respective fader. You can also toggle the automation fader up here, but that's a little more difficult. This is a little easier to grab. Now this could be assigned to an external controller. You could manipulate that hardware as well. So let's explain what happens here. Even though we have no automation written right now, when we're in touch mode, it will sense the 4.1 minus 4.1 dB setting, use that as a basis. It will modify according to my fader motions. And when I release the fader, it will snap back to this minus 4.1. Let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, let's go ahead and zoom in on this. And you can see it sort of back wrote to the beginning of the track. Here's where I started moving the fader, and here's where I released the fader. It snapped back to the minus 4.1. That's how touch works. And the key thing about touch is what it does when you release the fader. It snaps back to existing automation. How fast that snaps back is dependent on what you have your ramp time set in automation preferences. Let's go ahead and take a look at latch, the next mode. Now, latch functions identically to touch in that we have to be playing and it'll respond to the fader movements. But the difference is when we let go of the fader, it will keep recording at whatever that setting is until we stop and then it will return to the existing. And if there's no automation written downstream, it basically sets that level for the entire track. Let's go ahead and watch this. stop. Let's go ahead and uh, get a better view here. Now you can see our motion. And when I let go with latch, it didn't snap back to the minus 4.1 like touch did. In fact, it just stayed where it was. Now let me show you what happens with latch when we have additional automation written downstream. Let's go back to our roughly our minus 4.1. And there we go. And I'm going to go ahead and put another node or two. Let's scroll down a little bit and I'll put a node down here. And let's watch what happens now. We're going to be in latch mode again. I've released it. It hasn't changed. It hasn't snapped back. I'll go ahead and hit stop now. And in this case, you sometimes get this angle or line, which is maybe not what you want. So in this case, if it does that, you're going to have to do something like that, which is closer to my fader movement. That's how latch works. I'm a touch guy. I almost always use touch. I never use latch. Now, let's take a look at the last mode, and that's write. Write you need to be careful of. Write overwrites even if you don't move anything. And I'm going to go ahead and create another subtrack here. And let's move this to pan just because I want to show you it does multiple parameters at once, all parameters at once. So let's go ahead and create a few little things here. And let's go ahead now. I'm going to hit play and watch what happens. It's going to overwrite both parameters simultaneously. Now that can be what you want or not. You need to be careful of it because it's doing multiple parameters without you doing anything. Probably something you don't need to use normally. If you need to eliminate your automation on a track, go up to track automation and you've got a bunch of choices right here in this menu. Delete currently visible, which means what parameter 
or you can delete all automation data of the current track. Those are the two functions that I find quite useful. Now, as soon as you stop playing, it will default from right, and that's a preference again in your setting in your automation preferences. So that's a bunch of tips on some recording real-time automation. Hope you got an idea or two out of them, and we'll see you on the next video. We got a lot of automation videos to explore. Thanks.